two, one. Welcome everybody. Fantastic to have you all here today. Welcome to the first edition of Positive Moments with Andrew and Don. It's a real blessing to have you all here. For those of you who don't know, I'm tuning in here from Tenerife, Spain, on the other side of the world, uh, from Trinidad and Tobago. And my, uh, my good friend, my mentor, um, Don Lafoucard, is, 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 uh, is here with me today. And we're looking forward to spending this moment with you all. Um, and we would say, I'd like to say a huge thanks to Republic Bank for making this possible because these moments are going to be very, very special for all of you. We've gotten lovely feedback from everybody um, that allows us to help us tailor this presentation into what, uh, what we'll be going into today. So I will let um, my, my good friend, I'm calling the, the word boss, I'm calling the eagle, start off with, uh, with what we have here today. What, what, what is the real situation today here, Don? Tell us. Yes, so hello everybody. Glad to have you all on. Um, I'm representing Trinidad, Andrew's representing Spain, but we're representing Trinidad as well too, you know. <laughs> so we want to say again, thank you to Republic Bank. Thank you, Republic Bank, for making this possible. Um, we are the end of a crisis, or so for some, we're still in a crisis. I think they just had some news there, but you know how, how again we're going to open back up. But that word crisis has been spoken a lot, I mean, in the last couple of weeks, last, last two months especially. And at this time, we want to just, just want to give Andrew just 30 seconds because we think we have some value to add and we really want people to write down some stuff. So those of you who are listening, um, we want to encourage you to get some pen and paper. We've given you some stuff. We have a wonderful mix here, a wonderful group. So we're glad to have each and every one of you. I think there's some people still trying to join and are going to be joining, but um, we're going to go with what we have. So if you could get some pen and paper, and as you know, I'm inspired to speak. Andrew, I believe as well, we cut from the same cloth. Okay? We cut from the same cloth. We do not, not right now, another time we'll talk about our association, you know, maybe in program number two, second session, you know. But um, I want you to write down the word crisis. And that's why, you know, this has kind of forced us all to get together. Andrew and I, as, as we hinted in one of our emails, we are not the, the, the folks who are gonna sit down. Both of us, in spite of what happens, you know, where there's a wall or whatever it is, whatever challenges we face, we're not going to sit down. And the crisis, those who know me and those who are getting to know me, I love words. And um, I love to do things with words. I get an explanation in words. I see I'm just smiling already. But you know, with the, the, the crisis, there's the word is twice in crisis. And folks, it is what it is okay so we have to face it all right it is what it is that's part of crisis if you look at the word c r i s i s it is what it is the, the c in front is really how we see the eyes is we see and we have to see what we see is the r and that's our response so again an opening nugget for you, the crisis is what it is, but what is important for us to see is our response coming out of the crisis. Some see it as a crisis, there's a lot of challenges, but really and truly, there are a lot of opportunities, a lot of opportunities, and it's a really a matter of perspective. So Andrew, I don't know if you want to add anything, because it's really how we see, I mean, and the, way you, the way you see it, Andrew, Andrew has to tell you a little bit about Spain and how people have to communicate now. Andrew, you want to share a little bit? Absolutely. And I couldn't agree more with you. You know, it is what it is. And the way we see, the way we respond is very, very important because I love to use the spiral. A spiral, you can go down a spiral, but you can also realize that you're going down and stop that downward spiral and reverse it and come back up. I like to call it fighting gravity. Sometimes gravity wants to bring you down. But no, our response and what we do that allows us to elevate ourselves and respond well and stay uplifted. So these are the things we're really going to try and touch on throughout this. And this first episode, we're really going to acknowledge that the fact is we are human beings. No human being is perfect. No human being is able to just 
blow by life without having crisis. Human being is designed strong. From the time you are born as a baby, you're able to breathe on your own. As you grow as a baby, if you get stuck on your face, you're able to turn your face. You can't even walk yet. The human being is born to survive. The human being is born to make it through crisis. And this is what we all have inside of us. We are born. We are born with the opportunity to take that next level attitude and just keep going. So I really want to encourage everybody from the start, from right now, to understand that you are a human being and you have the full potential to take yourself to the next level by just believing and having faith. People may say faith is religion and faith is, is due to all these. Having faith to me is just having belief, knowing that you have the faith that you can come out of this situation and you can elevate yourself. And always, when that spiral trying to pull you down, you're just going to try and come back up and keep trying and keep trying. As they like to say, Don, fail forward, you know? So, yes. you know, that's just the mindset. I really want to get this, this show on the road with everybody and just this, this grab, this grab this COVID-19 by the reins and ride it. Don't let it, don't let it throw you around. Let's ride it and let's, make, let's find a way to grow through this. So, as we have... Uh, all our attendees still coming in. I just want to say a little welcome to everybody. Um, and I really want to say that let's, let's really oper operate in this with faith, a belief that we all have the power, every single one of us. So no matter the circumstances done, we got to stay in full flight. Have to. Yeah, def definitely, definitely. And Andrew, you know, we are stronger when we think stronger, you know, so we're really stronger, but especially when we think stronger. And I want somebody to take note of that. And let me just give you another nugget in a word. This entire situation has been a challenge to many people. And, you know, even now there are many of our nationals who are in a, it's a bit, bit of a challenge. I mean, some is really, we have to face the fact that some who are not getting their regular meals, there's some who have lost their jobs. It is really a challenge. And I wanted to challenge you. If you could write the word challenge down, those of you would be encouraged you to take some notes, write the word challenge down. And if you write the word challenge down and you take out the LLE, what you would notice is that it leaves the word change. So every challenge, we have to change how we approach the challenge. This crisis is indeed a challenge. But it is also an opportunity as well. It's really a matter of perspective. It gives us a chance to look at things, you know, also to get involved with our family and so on, and look at them maybe even differently. Many of us have not spent so much time with our family for the longest time. And that too is a challenge. So again, it is a challenge. And it brings me to a question, where are we now? I know there are people who are listening who are part of the essential services. You're part of an essential service. So... You haven't been on lockdown really, but there are many people who have been locked down. And let me say, even though we have to be under a phrase called lockdown, our thinking must never be locked down. We are free to, to think and we are free to have a perspective. You know, we are free to have a perspective and we're stronger when we think stronger. So again, welcome to all of you. We had some who just joined us there, Andrew. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is positive moments with Andrew and Don. We didn't just say moments with Andrew and Don. There's a lot of positivity going to come out here. They're going to come out in words. And very soon we're going to share, Andrew, I think I may share in a little while. I might share my screen and I'm going to put up some stuff. So could we just get some feedback? If we could just get a few comments, those of you listening, you could just type up a few comments. Did you get the nugget with crisis? What is, is, we need to see our response. Make sure it is one that is positive. And then with challenges, there are challenges are really about the changes. The LLE, by the way, if I didn't say anything about the LLE, let me say it now. The LLE is we have to live life every day, COVID or no COVID. We have to live life every day. Okay? I think that's, so, a, that's, a, great, that's a great way to think of it. And, you know, the, the reality is, as you said, so many people have, have lost their jobs and so many people don't know what the future is like. 
And I, I have no idea what the future is going to look like. And neither does Don. None of us have any idea what the future is going to look like. But what we do know is what we want for the future. And this is faith. Faith is continuing to believe that no matter if you lose your job, no matter if the Olympics is postponed, no matter if you're injured on a, on a hospital bed, no matter if you lose your, your, a loved one, no matter what, faith, faith is believing that we can continue. Even when the, some of the closest people to you tell you, you can't do that. You shouldn't do that. I don't think you should do this. I don't think you should do that. Faith in yourself is believing that no matter who, what, when, where, how tells you that you can't do it, is the belief that you have inside of you that you can. And we all, we every single one of us is born with this. And this is a gift. We're all born with a few things. We're all born with faith. We're all born at 24 hours in one day. And we're all born with the, one of the biggest blessings. And that's the opportunity to make decisions at free will. Every decision yeah. you make, every single decision, commitment is the decision. Bad decisions, you're still committed to it. Good decisions, you're committed to it. So commitment is one of the most important things I have learned through this COVID experience to keep you disciplined. If we lose, if we lose commitment in this period of time, we lose the opportunity to keep that faith alive. We lose a chance. Oh, it, it will never go on. Faith will always be there. But the chances to build on it will slow down. So we really have to commit to what we believe in, revolutionize our thoughts. The same way Don and I never thought that we would be speaking to you all here on Zoom. While I am stuck in Spain away from my family, friends, wife, we never thought this would happen. But we had faith. Don and I have been touring schools all across Trinidad and Tobago. Don and I have faith that we could continue doing the mentoring and the inspiring that we have been doing. COVID-19 will not stop us. Nothing will stop Don and I from achieving what we want to achieve. Because we believe that the faith never dies until you decide it dies. So don't let that faith die, guys. Don't let that faith ever die. Keep that faith alive. And just you know, add to that too, our perspective now during this time will determine what happens after this time. You know, this moment prepares us you know, for the next moment as well too. So it's very important now that we remain positive because we're coming out of this. No crisis lasts forever, none. No crisis the world has ever had lasts forever. And if you look at it positively now, they're very sad. Yes, we would have lost lives. They're not making light of that at all. You would have lost lives. But I'm telling you again, no crisis lasts forever. Our response is very important. Very, very important. And it, just because we're in a bad situation doesn't mean it is all bad. Exactly. Let me just say again, just because we're in a bad situation, it doesn't mean that it's all bad. It's, all, it's lost forever. Now, what I want to do, Andrew, is I want to, I'm going to share my screen. Those of you taking notes, I'm going to share my screen here. Okay, and put some stuff in. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. Let me just get that. So I'm trying to get up here. Okay, so let's go here, folks. And I think, so my screen is up, right? So everybody, if you could see the screen, just tell us the screen, screen, go scream. It just says screen, you know? So we have the screen, you see in the screen and so. So again, this is Positive Moments with Andrew and Don, live here today, right now. And folks, just a couple of thoughts for us to think about. So have your pen and paper ready, have your pen and paper ready. Andrew, I like what I'm seeing. I've seen some people, they're screaming or they're seeing, you know what I mean? So, right now, it's a matter, is it a six or a nine? It's really a matter of perspective. That's what it is. It's a matter of perspective. That's what this COVID is. That's what every crisis has always been. Some see the 
challenge and then others see the opportunity coming out of it. Now, it says here, and I think we need to get this very, very clear, okay? <laughs> if you're always rushing to the next moment, you know, the afterwards, okay? What happens to the moment that we're in now? Andrew, I'm not going to tell anybody that you see the unknown at the bottom there? That's really short for anonymous. But I think I went to look for anonymous today. I couldn't find him on Google, you know, until I realized it was anonymous. Okay, folks, if you're a little out there, but it happens, you know? <laughs> but positive moments with Andrew. And we're thinking about the next moment. There was a moment in time when we had joined him on the water. And there's a moment in time now. Hey, it's not on the water anymore, but on this, 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 on this webinar to encourage you. And I'm asking you to think about the next moment because there is going to be a next moment after this. How is it going? How are you going to approach it? You need to give it a little talk. Let me show you something else, right? And it says here, so I'm going to have to go to the next slide if I, if I so. I, I, I couldn't agree with you, you know, Don, that you um, really need to be super aware of living in the moment, you know? We can't rush, we can't rush. In every moment that we have, I like to say extend the moment, extend the moment and live in it. Because honestly, it's, it's the only moment that you have in, in, in that point in time. Man. And you don't know when the next moment is going to come. So really cherish each moment and, and live in it and soak it up. Most definitely. And Andrew, I'm going to give a few nuggets there in terms of the, some things to go against in this moment. And one of them is anxiety. So a lot of people tend to, Andrew, to be very anxious. You all don't know this, but Andrew, how long have you been in Spain now? Uh, over 60 days. 60 days. And trust me, Andrew would want to be back here right now, but he can't get anxious about it. I mean, things that the borders are opening up slightly and arrangements have been made, but anxiety, it, it doesn't lead to the best decision. The other thing we want to guard against is fear. And we know this one already, fear, most of us would know, fear is false evidence appearing real. It's not real, but it's false evidence appearing real. I mean, if you leave it up to Don Lafuka, he would look at fear and say for every action, there's a reaction. Okay? But I want to tell you, fear is false evidence appearing real. So we don't want to let fear grip us in this time. Another thing is doubt. Fear can paralyze, and so can doubt. If you keep doubting what's going to happen, you're doubting yourself and your skills and whether or not you'll get a job again or whether or not the kids will go back to school, when is CXC, when is SCA. Hello, that doubt is going to have you confused. And your indecision is going to have a cost. It's going to take a toll on you. The more indecisive you are, you're going to get some nerves. So you need to calm down. Yes, the situation, none of us knows what's going to happen. We're thankful here where we are, and where Andrew is, lots of people would have died. In Spain, I think a couple thousand people would have died. You know, in Trinidad, thank you, we didn't have that, that, that many, but, but some people not sure what's going to happen next. There is some doubt. And then most importantly, we don't want to lose our focus. In spite of all of this, we still have a purpose. I normally say if we focus on our distraction, it can become our attraction, and then there'll be subtraction. Again, if we focus on what distracts us, eventually it starts to attract us and then we start to, we start to lose out from what we're supposed to be focused on. So folks, it's important not to have anxiety. It's important not to be fearful. It's important not to have doubts and also not to lose your focus. We don't want to become directionless. We don't want to just be going like the plants outside. We're going how the breeze low. No, that's not the way it's supposed to go. And I, the last thing I want to say is this one, blame. Let's stop, not blame anybody. Life is not what happens to us, but rather what we choose to do about what happens to us. If you came on this webinar and you took that point, that's more than worth it for you. Life is not what happens to us, but rather what we choose to do about what happens to us. If you look at the last word blame, the last word is in the word blame, there's the me. So every me listening, all of us, I have to, to take some. I have to take some responsibility. I have to have a response. We could blame this one and blame that one and blame, I almost said Ian Allen, right? But we could blame anybody, everybody want to blame somebody. 
okay? But we have to be careful. We're not going into blame. Now, Andrew, guess what this, this opportunity, and this is going to be new for Andrew too. I found out there are a few things, Andrew, I'm calling it the ABC approach, okay? The ABC approach, there are a few things, right? And we don't, and, and, and I'm just going to come back here, getting into a comfort zone. So I just want to quickly say, don't get into a comfort zone. There's a different zone. There's comfort, there's fear, there's learning, and there's growth. Okay? Somebody could take a picture of this and this is something to have for life. You don't want to stay in a comfort zone. It might feel good, but you're already doing nothing. That's why let's, it's ready to stop. Let's go back and to the last slide one second. Yeah, sure, man. I want to just sure. touch on I want to touch on this a little bit because this is very very powerful stuff here. Don't Certainly, so, by all means. Um, go back to the next slide. Pardon me. You went back to the next slide. Yeah, so I'm on I'm on the, this slide with the comfort getting into a comfort zone. This one. No, the one before. Yeah, this one here. All right. right. Yeah. So this is this this here. We got to understand. If we were to take at the breaking point. So let's say we have 90 degrees. You know, inside and outside of 90 degrees, really important. You have nervousness on the left side and you have excitement on the right side. When you want something really bad, because we all want things, that's a fact. We all want things. And in some cases, we gotta be careful what we want because our nervousness can cause us to want the wrong things by saying, I don't want to lose my job. I'm so scared to lose my job. I'm so scared to lose this contract. This nervousness becomes fear-based instead of excitement. The excitement that the challenge is now there for you. And this is hard, guys. This takes, this takes time to dig inside of you to really understand where is this nervousness, where is this anxiety coming from? Whether it is you have, to, you have a, a mortgage to pay, which I do, whether you have kids to feed or you have a, a, you know, bills to pay on the whole, that anxiety comes from nervousness. Whereas we, we as human beings were put here to play. We're put on planet Earth to play, to enjoy nature, to play with everything that we do, from business to family to friends. Everything, is a, everything seems to be a play. Play with everything. And this is, where, this is where it becomes excitement. When there's excitement, it's love-based. So this is a very hard thing to understand, people. But try and, try and follow me here for a second. If you could go down the road of thinking to yourself, wow, I need to keep this job. I really want to keep this job. What can I do? What can I do to keep this job? How can I become better? Can I reach my boss and say, hey, I'm happy to work extra hours. I'm happy to work after hours. I'm happy to do this. I'm happy to do that. You really want this. What extra can you do? For me, I'm stuck here in Spain. I don't know when next I'm going to go home. What extra can I do? I know I could train extra hard inside here. I could watch every single race footage of my competitors and see what's online to see what they were doing before because some of them are beating me. I could look and understand the rules of sailing and, and call a guy down in Argentina. Hey, I need to understand the rules of sailing a little better. Please, let's talk. This is the things. This is where the fact is, we don't know if the Olympics is going to happen next year. And I can't be here sitting down nervous, anxious, crying, sad, depressed. I can't. I cannot. My faith will not let me be there. And we all have faith. So now, how do we change? How do we shift this perspective? As I like to say, I recently learned this from one of my mentors, shifting the perspective. You gotta shift it. As I said, that downward spiral is taking you down like COVID. No, yet I put up a chart of COVID, of how COVID spreads. And I put an X on the COVID, I was talking to some 11 year olds, and I put a heart over the COVID guy, a heart for love. If we act like how COVID spreads, and we spread love like that, that will put us in the growth zone. That will take us to the next level. That is what I call playing. COVID is danger. But you put love above COVID, that's all you can do. That's faith. 
and know that the fact is, it's a fact. People are going to lose their jobs. People are going to go hungry. My foundation is trying to help back home while I'm here. We all have to come together and see what we can do. Don and I have taken our time to come here. Republic Bank has taken the opportunity for us to come here. Don has faith. I have faith. Republic Bank has faith. This is growth. You all have faith. And I have four little tips that could really help you transform this situation if it really is a situation that is getting you down. And you've got to write this down. First thing is ask. Ask what you, for what you want. And ask for it in every single word you ask for it. Make sure there's nothing negative about it. You can't say in your question, I hope I don't lose my job because that is negative. Your question is to me, I believe I deserve to keep my job. That's the first thing. Ask yourself, what do you want to do? For me, I am asking myself, Andrew, what's your question? I believe I could win an Olympic gold medal. I have been doing this for so many years. I have been doing this for invested everything. I've had, I've had so many big falls. I've had so many things happen to me in my life that probably I shouldn't be sitting with you all here right now, far less standing when I want to. But I ask for the things that I want and I continue to ask and I don't let anybody tell me I can't ask for it. I believe I can have it. So first question you have to ask yourself is, what do you want? Ask yourself that question. Two, write it down. Write it down. If you're not writing it down, it's a dream. And a dream is just a dream. Don, tell us about dream, please, before I continue. Yeah, well, you know, the dreams become a reality for those who do more than just dare to dream. Let Repeat me say it, again. please. Dreams become a reality for those who do more than just dare to dream. You have to be willing to do more, and you can even start by just writing it down. That's it. That's where it starts. You write it down. For me, I have these moments in my life that are super inspirational. Super inspirational. I might be getting ready to go to bed. It's, it's almost midnight, and I'm on my pillow, and my brain just turns on. Ram! And these ideas come out of nowhere. All of a sudden, I am telling myself, do I go to sleep or do I write it down? Do I go to sleep or do I write it down? Yo, get up and write it down. The, for me, the Lord is talking to me. He's sending you a vision. He's sending you a dream. It's your choice. If you want to write it down or if you want to go to sleep. If you're going to sleep, I don't believe that you're listening to what is the message being sent to you. I believe your purpose is, being, is talking to you a lot in your life. Purpose is continuous, continuously talking to you. Listen to it. If you feel it and you believe it, write it down. So you ask, then you write it down. And the number three I love the most. And you go in faith. I said it to the start. You don't let anyone stop you. You do not. And the closest people to you sometimes, this is reality. There's only one of you. So how could, how could the closest person next to you believe in your dream to exactly how you do they're not you they'll never be you you are you alone you could be an identical twin and you're not the same fact so remember write ask for what you want in a positive way write it down go in faith and let no one stop you is number four number four is you are unstoppable all right so I really want to encourage you all to take that four-step program right now and embrace that into your life and everything that you're doing, everything that is not going well, take that four-step program and build on it and build on it and build on it. And I promise you, it will work. It has to work. This is how, this is how the law of attraction works. It's not going to come today. It's not necessarily going to come tomorrow. You've got to be patient and believe in it. Keep believing it. Keep believing it. I didn't become an Olympian overnight. Started sailing when I was six years old. And I did not like it when I was six years old. Remember that. I didn't like it. But now, sailing is, is in my blood. One of the things I love the most. So guys, please, 
write it down. I don't care if you could spell it, because Mr. Mr. Dyslexic over here can't spell every word. Fact. I don't care. I'm going to write it down. And if I can't spell it, I might draw it. But I'm going to write it down. Because you go to sleep. You go to sleep. And then tomorrow morning, you're like, oh, my gosh. I can't believe I didn't write that down. I can't remember now. And as Don says, you don't get a, tell them Don. You know, Andrew, I'm, I'm sitting down here and I'm smiling because, you know, this is called positive moments. And, you know, it's a positive moment when you ask. It's a positive moment when you write it down. It's a positive moment when you go in faith. And when you realize that you're unstoppable, you're not, you wouldn't be stopped. You can't be stopped, really. You're going to go forward. So, Andrew, I think that is extremely I don't know if anybody could give a thumbs up. I know some people, the first hundred people, they may not have been able to type something and so, but I, th I think some people there, they could give us a little love or type something. I'm going to share one thing very, very quickly. I hope you all take in some notes. The shortest pencil is better than the longest memory. Again, the shortest pencil better than the longest memory. So I hope you take in some notes. And I just want to tell you, Andrew, I am happy to announce here on our first Positive Moments with Andrew and Don program, what I call the ABC approach to deal with any crisis. Andrew, and the first thing we have to do is to assess the situation. To assess the situation, to understand a crisis is what it is. That's why the is is twice a crisis. And the crisis, the, the C and the R, we have to see the response needed. And that's not a response with anxiety, not fear, not doubt, not losing focus, and not blaming anybody. So again, the A, the ABC approach for any crisis is to assess the situation. The next thing we need to do is B, A, A B, C, be willing to learn something new. Yes, you have to be willing to learn something from this experience. Must be willing to learn something from this experience and be willing to do something differently. If you know how much I did not know anything about Zoom, but I'm learning. Andrew's my dead fantastic teacher. Let me tell you, it's another topic for another one of these sessions to talk about Andrew and what he knows about computers. It actually blew me out of the water. I didn't expect this sailor would be able to do it. I really did, you know, but in terms of technically and what to do and to act this, and, I mean, it's been a fantastic. He's mentoring me, teaching me what to do. And the other thing, so we have A, assess the situation. B, be willing to learn something new in the meantime, right? And then C, choose to have a positive attitude. So we could be positive, but we have to demonstrate that. And this for me is a time where hope, there's no, but the, right now you see the word hope? Hope for me, H-O-P-E, is helping other people every day. We may not go and give somebody groceries. We may not be able to go and give jobs. But we could even send out something positive on our Instagram. So folks, we want you to help somebody, even where you are. A parent, you can help somebody. A youngster, you could help somebody. There's some students now who don't have the computer at home. You could still find a way. Yes, we have to social distance, but to find unique ways in helping other people. So again, A, B, C, F, choose to have the right attitude. Be willing. Assess the situation. I just did them in, re in reverse there. Okay? Now. So one I'm second, let me share. Before you are uh, the ABC crisis, I think it's very important. Um, yeah, I, let me let me put that up. Let me, let me you don't have to you don't have to pull it up. It's okay. You don't have to pull it up. But um, okay, sure. it's super important because during this period, in most cases, we have a lot more time on our hands. A lot more time gives us a lot of time to reflect. Sometimes this reflection can go bad. And it's really important to realize where is our train of thoughts going? And I repeat what hope means, please, Don. Repeat what hope means, please. Yeah, hope is H O P E. It's helping other people every day. Okay. Helping other people every day. All right. And that so is that is that is for me one of the most important important things so we have to remember in this time of COVID-19 and when when this whole thing passes because it will don't don't forget that either it's because not because that we, the world is in such a, a better situation in years to come that we could forget we can't forget that 
we have to help other people every day. And this, this, this word uh, self-made, you all would have heard me use this before. Self-made doesn't exist. So anybody who's a very successful person, uh, for example, me, I'm in the boat by myself. People say, oh, wow, well done on getting to the Olympics, Andrew, nice. I say, it wasn't just me. You can't see the rest of those people on the boat. You put everyone else on the boat, and as I say, my whole boat will sink. I have a humongous team. You have to help. You have to help each other every single day. You know, and I want to challenge you all here today to do something unique. Because, you know, throughout our life, we haven't always had the best of experiences. And something that could really change someone's life here today is, they may be someone that you really want a message, you know, to express your, your gratitude for them or to apologize to them or to really and truly, you just feel like you need to reach out to them, but you, you, you're, you're feeling fearful. You're not sure how it's going to go. You're worried if you apologize for a situation, they may take advantage of you in the future or something like that. Hey, I really want to encourage you all to be inspired by yourself to reach out through technology and use that phone as a very powerful tool to help one another. And if you start this trend in your life, it's something that, you, that will eventually become a routine. And something that becomes a good routine will spread across your whole life. So um, while it may be very challenging to do something big like this, I want to share with you two very powerful, very, very powerful changes in my life. Um, and I'll touch on a third one too, that have happened, two have happened during the, the COVID-19 experience. And one has happened a couple of years ago. Um, so I want, I want you all to go start small. What are things that you could do to start small, to really and truly build this faith back in yourself in certain instances? Because it's not all joy and happy for us, but we could actually, we could actually prove to ourselves in very small ways that we are stronger than ever, that the mind, is so powerful. I am a human being. I bite and pick my nails all day long. I make my nails bleed. That's just what I did. That's just what I used to, that's just what I did. Bite, pick, thing, bite, hurt, uh, go sailing and get infected. It's been going on almost four weeks now. I haven't touched my nails. Haven't bit a single nail. Haven't, I, I, went to the, I went to the supermarket. I bought a nail clippers. I bought a nail file. It feels very really weird using a nail file. It feels very feminine, but I don't care. I'm proving to myself that I don't have to bite my nails. Small little change, boom, shift in perspective. Leave your hands alone. Don't bite your nails, not good for you. Your nails are dirty. COVID-19, you don't want to be touching up your face. Yo, learn. Small little change, humongous effect in my life. I feel like I've been, okay now, I feel like I can do so much more just by making that, switching that on. And then, one of my mentors has me said, all right, Andrew, it's really important that, and this is a, this is a whole next topic, so I'm not going to go into it, and, and you may have questions about this, but taking hot showers is not the healthier thing for you, Andrew. And all my life, oh, I love a hot shower. I love a hot shower. It's so relaxing. But my body type is not receiving it very well. So I haven't taken a, a hot shower in two weeks. You all know how cool the water that comes out of the tap in Europe is? It's like fridge water. But my body is adapted. I don't come out today shivering. I come out today, you see the, you see the redness in my skin because the blood rushes to the skin. The body is going into this healing mode and this is, a re, this is a new thing. I never thought I could take cold showers. The shower I use hasn't seen hot water since, since the last two weeks. This to me is a small mental change. I can do that, Andrew. And I have been doing it. And every day it gets easier and easier and easier and easier. And this is the mental strength we all have. Some people tell me, Andrew, you're completely crazy for, for not eating meat anymore. I don't eat meat anymore. You are completely crazy, man. You eat eating meat for 28 years and all of a sudden, boom, meat is out of my life. I never thought I could stop eating meat. I realized, yo, Andrew, this is not good for you. Some people, it works well, fantastic for them, but this is not the best for you. I am on a mission right now, a mission to, to make sure I take care of my body to reach the highest I can reach, to really and truly tell myself, I can, I can do these things. And these are the things that I have control of. I don't have control of Don. I don't have control of any of you all here today. 
I have control of what I can do. So let's, let's really remember to start by taking control of what you can control. And remember, the only thing you ever will be able to control is you. And that is life. This is the beauty of life. You can't see the next minute. You can't see tomorrow. You can't think like anybody. All you can do is act out of love and respect. That's all you can do. But wait, wait, wait. Does it happen to me where sometimes I feel affected by what someone says to me? Yes, I am human. Does it mean that sometimes I ask myself, uh, I think I should eat a hamburger? Yes, it does. I am human. Does it mean that I say, do I really need to take this cold shower now, boy? Yes, it does. These things do cross my mind. And do I think, I can bite my nails, man. That's all right. I've been doing it for 28 years. Should be all right, no? Yes, these things do cross my mind. I am human. We all in this room are human. And we know human. I used to think that I was a robot and I was, I was, I was trying to become perfect. I, that was the mentality I had. One of my very close mentors helped me realize that I am not a robot. I am never going to be perfect. No one is ever going to be perfect. And that is the beauty of life. It allows us to understand that our imperfection, our God-given gift of imperfection is perfection. And you are perfect just the way you are. You keep that faith, you will be living perfection. Wow. You know, Andrew, that was beautiful. I mean, I have to grab a tissue because that was, ooh, you're on fire. <laughs> that was fantastic. Even, even my eagle is looking on and saying, hey, I want to get some of that. You know, I get some of that. But let me tell you, what Andrew said there was, was really fantastic. And folks, let us not miss. There's a little reflective question because these are positive moments. And sometimes in the moments, we have to be a little reflective. And... A question for all of us to consider, Andrew included, what would we have done differently if we knew what was going to happen? What would we have done differently? And let's not let this catch us again, just like this. So what would we have done differently? There's some people we would have wanted to say some, some kind of things too. We wanted to treat ourselves a little better. There are lots of lessons that could be learned in this. What would we have done differently? But we can't live in our past. Yes, the past we can reflect on and, and and help, help let, let it be a guide for us to go forward. But after this, what future do we hope for after this? What's the future that we hope for after this? And it's very important to remain hopeful in this time. That's why Andrew and I are doing this. That's why it's called Positive Moments with Andrew and Don. Yes, we have this moment, but we know there's going to be a moment afterwards. So we're not going to get stuck here. Coulda, shoulda, woulda. Get it out of your dictionary. Coulda, shoulda, woulda. That do end up, that ended like didn't. Okay? Let's start to do something. Let's make some plan. Even as you're taking notes, if there's one nugget or two nuggets you get from today and say, look, you know what? Maybe it is to look at my diet. Maybe I don't have to use hot water, you know? Maybe I, I maybe not don't bite my nails or whatever it is. There's something that you can do, but to make sure when you come out of this, you come out a lot better for it. And the people around you, the people around you are going to benefit, benefit from it. Let me just throw in a little teaser because I know some people, the time is coming upon us and so but Let me just throw a little teaser. Andrew gave you a little, little, little bit about his story. Some know about the wall. Something about the wall. Andrew, the second program, so the second one out of the 16, because the 16 of these will be running, we're going to be talking about the Andrew Lewis story. And that story about the wall falling, I'm going to get, give you a little tease about it, but there's a lot more to that story that, just, that you don't know about. And we're going to go through that story, okay? We're going to get through that story. Andrew's an Olympian, but he didn't just arrive there. It's not an image, not, nothing called overnight success. And what I told him, and why I love doing stuff with him, and why this is so easy, I mean, people say that we have this kind of link together. But, you know, we both have a similar heart. We both have a similar heart, and we want to help people no matter what. COVID is stopping us. It's not stopping us. When we look at, for example, we're doing this on Zoom. Zoom starts with Z. So Z is the last letter of the alphabet. Some people think it's the end, but no. The two O's in the middle, either is an obstacle, 
or an opportunity. So we see it, not an obstacle, we go to the next O, is an opportunity for the M, and that M is for positive moments with Andrew, Andrew, and Don. Okay, we'll talk about that a little before we get into the story, the next time around, we'll talk about how we actually became a team. You know, it was right before the fall of the wall, actually, on him. So how we actually became a team and how we do so well and how we, and each one, he may call me a mentor. I call him a mentor as well. He's teaching me. He's teaching me. Don, that's not how you log on. Don, this is how you have to post, you know. But I, I'm enjoying and I'm learning as well, too. Each one, teach one. And, he, and, and you know, there's a wide range. I think on, on the line, Andrew, we have some principals who be leading by example in this time, but their parents, their parents who are also leading by example. Parents, you have to make sure in this time, the kids are looking up to you. Those are the, those parents who are looking up particularly. So you can't be panicking. You can't be in doubt and not sure. No, you have to, hey, we, we're going to get through this. We're going to get through this. Okay? And you're going to give them a little time to play, a little time. The little ones have to do a little study. There's a lot to learn. Look how much more time for CXC, Andrew. If this was my time and I had to do CXC, hello, I get a scholarship. I tell you one time. Uh, <laughs> how much time I, I waste? But again, it's a chance for us, Andrew, to learn. My friends, it's a time for us to learn every trial. And I'm giving somebody this one. Every trial, T-R-I-A-L. Every trial is really meant to be a trail, T-R-A-I-L, going forward, to make a trail for others to follow. The A moves up, and that A comes forward because first, Andrew, we have to have the right attitude. No doom and gloom from this. This too shall pass, according to the scripture. This too shall pass. But how are we going to, to be for it? We're going, we have to be better. We can't be better. You know what I mean? I think better come before better. I want to stay by better. I don't want to go on to better. I stay by better. You know what I mean? Yeah. You understand? Yeah. And let that, Andrew, a light pass and light spread like butter. No, I'll leave that alone. Okay? All right. So we want to be better people. And let's try to see how we can help somebody every single day. Hope, again, is helping other people every day. Sometimes we're really too selfish. It's not all about us. And there's no social distancing when it comes to love. Andrew, I love the fact there. And I, and, and just heard Andrew share, he, would, he doesn't have it right now, but he would have shared a video of people actually sending love through their windows to other people and playing instruments. Oh, what a wonderful sight. That must be Andrew in Spain. I could imagine. Yeah, you, you want to talk about that a little bit? Because for you, I'm going to be coming into a close in a little while, but Andrew, for you, you have been an inspiration to me as well, too, of how you handled this entire thing. Okay, there are other athletes. I know that they, some of them, they're training and so, but guess what? The Olympics will happen when it has to happen. But you know what? There are people outside there, just like when the flood, when you got on board, right? You got on a boat. Okay, Andrew, but folks, you can't keep Andrew away from a boat. You take him out of the boat for sailing. Andrew find a boat during the flood, and he's going to drop off blue waters. Okay? So... <laughs> I mean, I'm bust your files a little bit. But that's what it's about because that passion is there, Andrew. And that's something Andrew and I have. We have a passion for people. That's a God given passion. And we want everybody, we enjoy life. Not that we don't go through stuff now, but we intend to make the best out of this. Folks, we don't know it all. No, we're still learning. We have an email address called Andrew and Don Live at Gmail. Andrew and Don Live at Gmail. We want you. Folks, we want you to email us what, what you'd want us to cover. We're going to bring a few guests on. Andrew. I'm not going to give them a little teasers yet, but we're going to bring some really interesting people on who have overcome. We deal with some overcomers who refuse to take the victim syndrome and say, no, I'm going to be a victor in spite of. Get somebody, write this down. Somebody listening out to this group here, write down these three words. In spite of, let them guide, guide your name. No matter what happens, in spite of whatever happens, I'm going to make it. In spite of COVID, in spite of loss of job, in spite of drop of income. Hello? In spite of we are going to make it. And every moment can be a positive. You know, but positive things will happen all the time. But hello, we can make something good out of it. So please feel free to email us, Andrew and Don live at gmail.com. Andrew, you want to tell them when the next session is going to be? 
Absolutely. And I will just touch on that last thing we're talking about. So over here in Spain, I have, I have, you know, really been impressed by the, the community efforts to, you know, applaud every single, I know we did it in Trinidad one day, every single evening at 7 p.m. It's, it's like a goosebumps effect. Everyone is outside the windows clapping for Spain, you know, for, for the first responders, for everybody who is doing their part. Everybody is doing a part to help. You, everyone who's staying home is playing their part. The first responders are playing their part. The, the government is playing their part. Everyone's playing their part so that we can pass this as fast as possible and lose as little as many, as little, as lose as little lives as possible. So it's, it's really impressive to be around the Spanish culture and know that every day at 7 p.m., it's still going on. I don't know when it's going to end. At 7 p.m. sharp, they're clapping and they're really applauding everybody. And that to me is very uplifting. So while it's such a sad situation around the world and so many lives are being taken and it's such a, it's such a situation that we don't know what is going to happen, that we just got to be, we just got to still create that excitement for life. We can't let it become fearful. We have to keep excited about life. This is not a time, of, of course, not to go out and gallivant and play the fool and, and, and call that your excitement because you're exci excited to get outside to go, and, to go and do something. No, be excited that you have life. Be excited and grateful for all the little things that we have. So, you know, we have a lovely lineup of sessions ahead and the next one is going to be next week, Wednesday, the same time. Um, so we, you all can look out for positive moments at Andrew and Don next week, Wednesday at 4 p.m. Trinidad time again. And as we, as we get ready to close, um, I just want to say that, you know, the first person that registered, um, you will be receiving a gift courtesy of Republic Bank. We will uh, send you a little email. Um, we know who you are, but we're not sure if uh, we want, you want to be big screen or not. But um, you will receive an email <laughs> from us. Um, and you will be receiving a gift because everybody who is in here today, y'all all, y'all all, all committed to this. Y'all all, all took an hour out of your day and some more to come here and spend this time with us and to embrace, you know, we don't get to see how y'all on the other side or get that feeling of seeing your cameras because of, of this, of how the uh, webinar is set up. But I really hope that you all receive this really well. And we really ask that if there are certain questions or certain worries in your, in your life that you believe we can assist with, reach out to us through the email. This is what we're trying to do over this period of time. Um, we're really trying to be here for you all. Um, you know, we, 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 have been getting, we have been getting emails and stuff. So just be patient with us as we get back to each of you all in a specific way. But really and truly, um, keep that head up. You know, as I will say, once that heart is alive, the fight is alive. The fight is alive, the faith is alive. So um, we look forward to, to sending the email to the person who has won the first gift. And every session, every session, we will send out a little, a little token or two courtesy of Republic Bank, thanking you all for spending that time. Yeah. You know, Andrew, if I could just, if I could just add to that, um, you know, this program, I know some people want to look at it again, and we are going to have a, ch a YouTube channel, Andrew and Don Live. So in a day or so, we're going to post this on a YouTube channel, and the address will be called Andrew and Don Live. The next session is at 4 p.m. on Wednesday, May 20th. And we want to say a special thank you to Republic Bank. A special thank you to Republic Bank. I think you know just behind me, you see the power to make a difference, and we all have the power to make a difference. And if you look at the logo, it's shaped by a heart. Okay, it's shaped by a heart. You have in the interlocking hands and so, and the heart is the only muscle that don't sleep. So, Andrew, we're gonna keep pumping that positivity. Okay, we're not stopping even in sleep. You're still thinking about something positive. All right, and folks, we want you to. They have to register again, Andrew. You have to register again. Okay. And, and those of you who are on, we are going to send you, we are going to send you an email to talk about Andrew. We can do that through the, the Andrew and Don Live at gmail.com about how to register again. Yeah, and so you get this link and so on. Um, 
we, we're going to test out a few things here, but you shouldn't have to register again, but we will send you all the information via email if it changes. Um, but look up, we have all your email addresses, so look out for some, uh, some input from us of the, the next moving forward. But you all know that we'll be posting up soon on Instagram and Facebook, so you all have the information and we have all your emails, so we will send you all out the next notification of exactly what's going to be happening. But you know for sure that we're on next week, Wednesday. And um, I just want to close off with something very powerful that, you know, I want to reiterate one more thing. You know, I might have touched on it a bit, but do not, at no, at no cost, do not ever let your circumstances hold you back. Ever. Ever. You have a dream, protect it. You have a dream, how do you protect it? You write it down, you keep it amongst the people that believe in you, and keep that alive. You know, it, it, it's, it's something that it only, it only dies when you, when you decide it dies. It only ends when you decide it ends. So don't let your circumstances hold you back. I want to say God bless to all of you all. Thank you all for joining us here today as Wally comes on his screen and, and my mentor, my good well, brother. He has just one good. What? Yeah, well, Wally has one thing to say, Andrew, before you press that button. Wally wants you, he's an eagle, okay? And he wants to remind you that the eagle flies better when there's a storm. And he flies above the storm. Hello, what is above us is really your brain up here. So what we want to do is to make sure that we think positively, positive moments with Andrew and Don. The word storm, S-T-O-R-M, we could make the most out of any storm. And that R means when we are responsible. So we have two guys here trying our best to be responsible. And that R to Andrew, making the most with us, that R, I want you to leave this for Republic back. Okay. And we want to thank them again. We want to thank Republic back for making this possible, really and truly from Andrew and I. This has been positive moments with Andrew and Don. We shared a few nuggets, the ABC of any crisis. Andrew shared some wonderful things as well about in the little moments, the things that you could do. We have lots more to bring to you. See you next week. Uh, no, not next week. This week, in fact, coming up here. Okay. Uh, uh, Wednesday, the 20th. See you, folks. All right. So some creep, some crawl, some walk, some run. I know our discussion involves some fun, but much to our delight, we are thinking of the entire group as the eagle in full flight, in full flight, soaring to new heights. Very good. Thank you all again. I wish you all nothing but love and happiness. And I encourage you all to spread nothing but love and happiness. Keep safe. Wash your hands. Be there for one another. And let's, uh, let's be responsible as we flatten the curve and make a positive difference in the lives of the people around us, Trinidad and Tobago, and the world. God bless. Bye-bye, everyone. Take care. Bye.